These are the Greek prophetesses dotted around the empire of Greece, which the emperors would consult on matters of the future as most prophets delve in that type of work. There was 10 of them typically, the Chimenean Sibyl, the Erythraean Sibyl, the Delphic Sibyl, the Hellespontine Sibyl, the Phrygian Sibyl, the Libyan Sibyl, the Samian Sibyl, the Chimerian Sibyl, the Persian Sibyl, the Tiburtine Sibyl. The Libyan Sibyl of Egypt would be consulted by Alexander after he conquered Egypt. Jan van der Hoek depicted his own version of what he pictured the Sibyl to look like in this Renaissance style painting. All of these paintings were done by Jan van der Hoek, the Dutch painter, and you can see his interpretation is exquisite. This isn't the only person to depict the Sibyl of Amun looking like this but it's probably the best one this image is also unique because it holds other significant things from Egypt that happened even during the Roman period as you can see on her thigh she is holding a whip which is to symbolize the flail of Egypt and it also symbolizes the whipping of Christ and as you can see right next to the whip there is a crown of thorns the one that was worn by Christ this is a historical interpretation of what the Egyptians looked like and did all in one beautiful image and technically it's Christian art these paintings of the Sibyl the Egyptian Sibyl are from the 1700s and they depict the same black Egyptian Sibyl proving that the people in the Renaissance and the Enlightenment and all this other stuff that happened in Europe were interpreting the Egyptians as black people but not only that they fused sometimes the Persian with the Egyptian so it could be light skin or dark skin depending on which one they were fusing with Leonardo da Vinci's interpretation of the Persian Sibyl which is also known as the Egyptian Sibyl is seen here painted with very light skin unlike the other people who painted the Sibyls these Sibyls really spoke through the words of the gods the word oracle means to speak and if you're familiar with some of the ancient Greek writings then you do know that the oracle or oracles were used to speak through gods so technically these Sibyls were Sibylian oracles the big difference is that the word oracle technically was just a portal from the communication of the gods to earth so it could be oracled through animals oracled through anything else and also the buildings in which the oracles lived in were also called oracles so it's not as direct as the word Sibyl in ancient Greece but they were both used this definition is only important because I want to talk about the Sibyl Timo who Herodotus writes about and what nearly happened to her this will show you what type of people these Sibyls were this is an example so you can understand better what the Egyptian Sibyl would have been according to Herodotus the Perians themselves say that it happened as follows that when Miltiades was in a state of perplexity a captive woman who was by birth a Perian 
and her name was Timo, conferred with him. She was an inferior priestess of the infernal goddesses. When she came into the presence of Maltiades, she advised him, if he deemed it of great consequence, to take Peros, to act as she should suggest. She then made some suggestion, and he coming to the mound that is before the city leaped over the fence of Cirrus Thesmophoria. As he was unable to open the door, and having leapt over, he went to the temple for the purpose of doing something within, either to move some of the things that may not be moved, or to do something or other. And he was just at the door when suddenly a thrill of horror came over him, and he went back by the same way. And in leaping over the fence, his thigh was dislocated. Others say that he hurt his knee. Miltiades, accordingly, being in a bad plight, sailed back home, neither bringing money to the Athenians nor having reduced perils, but having besieged it for six and twenty days and ravaged the island. The Parians, being in informed that Timo, the priestess of the goddesses, had directed Miltiades, and desiring to punish her for so doing, sent deputies to the oracle at Delphi. As soon as they were relieved from the siege, they sent to inquire whether they should put to death the priestess of the goddesses for having made known to the enemy the means of capturing her country and for having discovered to Miltiades sacred things which ought not to be revealed to the male sex. But the Pythians did not allow them, saying that Timo was not to blame for this, but that it was fated Miltiades should come to a miserable end and she had appeared to him as a guide to misfortune. The Pythians gave this answer to the Parians.